Hi folks, so what we've got here is a Vialta Beamer uh, video phone that I picked up from the local bargain bin store for $2.99 and I figured I'd just do a quick teardown on it and uh, well, see if I can reuse bits of it or even the entire thing. But what it is is a combination camera, screen, and modem. And uh, this thing doesn't piggyback on the internet. What it does is it connects between your phone and your uh, phone line and basically uh, intercepts any communication that might go through. And if it detects that someone on the other side is using one of these things, it will auto-negotiate the link and uh, start up a video uh, session between the two. So no internet, uh, no anything. Uh, everything that's coming out of this thing is uh, analog. Well, I should say, you know, a digital video stream over an analog phone line. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool device. Uh, but of course, you know, these days with the uh, popularity of the internet and things like Skype, this thing is pretty much useless. So let's uh, take this thing apart and uh, see what's inside it. It's probably just going to be a couple of chips, maybe a one video processing chip and a modem chip and a uh, webcam system. I'm almost hoping that there's like a USB interconnect between camera and the rest so I can reuse the camera, but given the the vintage of this thing, I don't think that's uh, that's what's going to happen. But uh, anyways, there's the model number, BM80. I suppose I should do a little overview of this thing before I start tearing it to bits. So it's actually a pretty nice, sleek design for uh, the time. Um, it's classic, you know, early 2000s technology. But yeah, we've got the screen and the uh, camera on the front. We've got this pretty cool um, plastic surround thing, which makes it look kind of nice, I think. On the side here, we've got brightness control, caller ID. Apparently, you can turn on and off caller ID. A couple buttons, send a picture. Uh, change details of the video stream so you can increase or de decrease uh, detail um, or I guess you could optimize for movement and optimize for de detail I guess because um, it is only going over you know a phone line so the, any video link is not going to be particularly good uh, we've got a start button to start up the phone call and that's pretty much it you've got your phone jack and your uh, phone line jack on the side, on the back. That's about it, really. Front plastic part just comes off via these thumb screws. Let's see. I guess uh, those four screws, and that'll be it. Okay. So here we go. one of these annoying ones where you can't really... Oh wait, actually. Huh. Oops. Unplugged that ribbon cable by uh, by magic. And here we go. There's quite a bit in here, considering all it's doing. Uh -huh. Of course, this is, uh, you know, from back in the day. So these days, you know, this entire device would probably fit comfortably inside just this camera part. Now, if you uh, consider, you know, this phone here and subtract the battery and the keypad, you know, <laughs> you wouldn't uh, expect that this PCB for the entire phone is any bigger than this. And this phone is much more capable, uh, even though this is a, you know, stupid dumb phone, than uh, this device. So, kind of, you know, evolution of technology. And this includes a radio, it includes, you know, all sorts of other things. Uh, and of course a camera, so quite interesting how far we've progressed. And of course like an iPhone board isn't much bigger than this anyways, and an iPhone has much more processing power. So here's the camera board. Not much going on. It's uh, Vialta branded, revision 1.1. Um, it doesn't look like they're doing much 
looks like most of the magic is happening inside this module. And it does have little screws. Let's see if we can get inside it. You know, I looked up the model number of this thing, and I don't think I've seen uh, one of these messages from Google for quite a while. You know, did not match any documents. Great. So I've undone the screws. And there's the sensor. It's quite beautiful, as usually these things are. And uh, nothing interesting in there. It's just a lens. Sorry for the crappy view, but you can sort of see the bond wires there and the actual sensor itself. I can see it much better, but that's all you're going to get, unfortunately. And you may or may not be able to see the uh, individual red, green, and blue pixels. This is at uh, 10x. And there you go, there's the data manufacturer. Apparently Pentagon made this, 2002-825. Well, I was taking out this part and, uh, well, not much under there at all. Yeah, and this board is heat staked down, so I'm not going to be able to remove it without uh, compromising this thing. So, I think I'll just leave it in there, but, uh, you know, it's a pretty standard uh, early 2000s LCD type design. We've got your uh, uh, high voltage cold cathode uh, driver circuit over here. You know, this will be the uh, transformer for that. And you see the high voltage leads coming out of there into the backlight. Eh, not much else. Probably some buffer or op amp or something like that. And that's about it. You got a couple controllers down there. Not much interesting. Alrighty, so this is the main board, and it's altogether more interesting. So that's the connector for this little control daughter board here for the user interface. That's the LCD control uh, con uh, connector up here. Uh, and okay, so let's start off by looking at the modem. So the modem is made up of these two chips here uh, by ESS. It's their teledrive system. And uh, basically what we've got is a uh, big controller chip this provides uh, PC, basically a PCI interface to the host. Uh, it doesn't do all the processing. It actually lets the host do most of the processing. It's one of those win modems that you may have heard of uh, where the host CPU does a lot of the work. Uh, and this chip is the analog front end. So that would contain the ADC, the DAC, uh, the anti-aliasing filter, and things like that. And um, I'm pretty sure they chose this particular solution uh, because it has built-in support for some uh, timing information required by H324, which is kind of a, a video conferencing protocol. Um, so that would be why they chose this. Uh, moving along, uh, over here we've got an ES3883S. Uh, uh, sorry, 8383F, uh, again by ESS. And uh, I'm not really sure what that is. I was poking around. Uh, the closest thing was that I could find was an ES8381, which was a DVD uh, video processor. So I'm pretty sure that's just the video processing chip, maybe a built-in uh, codec. Oh, I should point out, uh, the teledrive, the master was an ES2898S, and the front end was an ES2828S. So, uh, moving forward, further to the side here, we've got, I think this was 8 megs of RAM. Uh, we've got a flash. I'm going to have to pull that out and read it in a minute. And we've got a CPU. And I thought this was glued down, but it's not. So, you can see it moving. Let's see if I can wrench this off. There we go. Well, that's interesting. I was expecting a more well-known CPU, but let's go check out the data sheet for this one. Web DVD. I don't know. Is this a DVD player by accident? Well, what do you know? So, basically what this is, is a RISC CPU with basically built-in uh, video processing capability. Uh, so here's kind of the feature list. Uh, interestingly, it has um, on-chip support for uh, V90 modems, so that makes sense. Uh, oh, by the way, this is, of course, 
primarily suited towards set-top boxes, but uh, clearly it'll work here. So that's a critical feature, the uh, modem, uh, you know, video, blah, 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 on-chip MPEG. I don't think they're using the on-chip MPEG, or at least not all of it, because um, the codec that this thing uses uh, is H.263, uh, close cousin of H.264 that you may know of. Um, so I'm not sure if that's being used or not, but it does support OSD, so on-screen display, so it does uh, blending of the video stream for you. Uh, it can do, it can put text uh, on the picture. Uh, they're suggesting karaoke lyrics and things like that. Um, DTS audio, various stuff like that. So, good choice for uh, a product such as this. And the, these things weren't cheap, by the way. Uh, I was looking around at like forum posts from the era, and these things were like $200 a pop. So if you wanted, or I even saw a pack of two uh, for like 500 bucks. So definitely not cheap devices. So I guess they could do with a little bit of waste in the uh, silicon here. So this thing is a Windbond W27E040. I've got it in my uh, Mini Pro, whatever it is, TL866CS that I learned of from uh, Dave Jones. So let's read this sucker in. Let's read the ID. Yeah, that worked. Let's see, uh, uh, um, um, read. There we go. I have placed it correctly, I think. Read. There it goes. So I've dumped the ROM, as you saw, and I've run strings on it. So here's some strings, you know, not very interesting stuff. Um, I've seen some of these, so I might try hacking this thing to see what, what it does. Um, things like Beamer is now ready. The camera appears to be damaged. Please call customer service. Continue going. There's a bunch of gobbledygook. Hoping to find some sort of debug menu. Just for fun. But... It doesn't seem... Oh, here we go. Oh, looks like some uh, protocol stuff. Too much control data in muxing. Too much video data sent to AL3 or A13... Uh, is that now? Darn fonts. Warning, this will erase... everything. Hmm. Maybe I should call that number. I dumped your ROM and now I saw this number. Um, can you help me out? 1.6523-2001. Oh, it looks like it was uh, right at the end of the day. <laughs> I hope they had a beer when they uh, released this. <laughs> this is kind of cute. Font tests. A quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That's cool. But anyways, down here we have a bunch of uh, modem strings. So AT plus VLS equals zero. I have no idea what that means, but those are modem commands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or at least a, um, a conversation template. Yeah, it looks like a conversation template. More junk. Oh yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. So I guess these are some strings that the modem might give out. Huh, these are uh, ESS chips. Or codes, or something. Mm, locale settings. More modem stuff, and that's the end.